In this video, I'm looking at PAG 11 pH measurement. So there's only one skill covered in the PAG, and that is the measurement of pH. So what we'll do is use this task here to look at that skill of pH measurement. Um, we'll read through the task, and then you can pause the video, have a go, and then play to hear the answers. So imagine the scenario, a student's been given seven colourless solutions, so they're just labelled at one to seven, and they are acids and alkalis. And they've been asked to plan a series of experiments or tests to identify each solution. They've got access to common laboratory reagents and apparatus, and they've been asked to provide three pieces of evidence to confirm the identity of each solution. So you can see there's the list of solutions and you're given their concentrations as well. And the other thing down at the bottom there in blue is we've got some Ka information. We're told the temperature in the lab was 25 degrees C and there's some extra information about the dissociation of ammonia. So the first thing I've decided to do is to add some indicator to the solutions and I'm going to use phenol phthalene. You can use different indicators so we could have litmus, um, universal or methyl orange but I've gone for this one. So phenol phthalene is colourless in acid and pink in alkali so all the acid or acidic substances will go colourless and the alkaline substances go pink in phenol phthalene. Test 2, I've said to measure the pH of the solution using a pH meter. So there's that skill now being assessed. So all the acidic solutions will have pHs less than 7. And you can see there after hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid, I've said very low. So you could, if you wanted to, actually sort of roughly say what the number would be. I'm actually going to do the calculations for all of these uh, at the end of the video. and You can have a go at doing those as well. So I'm not going to specify any numbers here, apart from saying that hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid would have very low pHs compared to the others. And obviously more than seven, the alkaline substances. And again, you can see there after potassium hydroxide, I've said that that would be very high. The third test I've said is to measure the change of pH of the solutions when you add a small amount of acid or alkali and again would use the pH meter to do that. So to all of the acidic substances imagine you added a small amount of sodium hydroxide. So the propanoic acid because it's a weak acid would show a sharp rise in pH. The propanoic acid sodium propanoate mixture would show very little or no change in pH and that's because that's a buffer solution. Hydrochloric acid, because it's a strong acid, would only show a very small rise in pH. Methanoic acid, weak acid, so sharp rise in pH. And sulfuric acid, again, strong acid, so small rise in pH. And then we do the opposite to the two alkaline substances, so adding a small amount of HCl. So the ammonia is a weak base, so it will be affected quite markedly by the addition of acid. So you'd see a sharp drop in pH, whereas the potassium hydroxide, strong alkali, so just a small drop in pH. So like I said a minute ago, I'm going to do the calculations now for all of those pHs. So if you wanted to pause the video again and have a go, you might need to go back to that introductory slide where you've got that extra information. And then when you're ready, play on and we'll look at the answers. And just so you know, I've given all of my pHs to two decimal places. So we'll look at the strong acids first. So the hydrochloric acid, there's its pH, 0 0.70, and sulfuric acid, 0 
So they are fully dissociated and the pH is therefore minus log of the H plus concentration. And you'll notice there for sulfuric acid, I've assumed that both of its dissociations are complete. So the H plus concentration I'm saying is two times the concentration of the acid. That's not technically true because one of the dissociations isn't complete. But that's way beyond the A-level specification, so I'm not going into that in this video. The weak acids now, so there were two of those, propanoic acid and methanoic acid. So to calculate the, the H plus concentration, it's the square root of the Ka multiplied by the concentration of the acid, and then just minus log the H plus concentration, and you can see I'm getting 2.94 for propanoic and 2.22 for methanoic. And then the pH of the acidic buffer solution. So we were told that it was a one-to-one -one ratio of acid to salt. So I've put the formula in there for the H plus concentration for a buffer. So it's Ka times the acid concentration over the salt concentration. Cassid over salt is my silly way to remember that. They're just going to cancel because of the one-to-one -one ratio. So the H plus concentration is effectively equal to the Ka value of the weak acid, the propanoic acid. And you can see there that comes out of the pH of 4.89. So if we look at the pH values of the alkaline substances now, I'll start with the potassium hydroxide. And if you remember, we said that the temperature in the lab was 25 degrees C, which means that Kw is going to be equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So the H plus concentration of a strong alkali is equal to Kw divided by the hydroxide ion concentration and that's coming out with a pH of 13.30 and then for the ammonia we had to use that information that it was only 1% dissociated and so therefore if the concentration of the ammonia was 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed the OH minus ion concentration will be 1% of that. And then the calculation runs the same as the potassium hydroxide. So we're getting a pH of 11.30 for ammonia.